Merci, bonsoir et bienvenue au journal. Un seul titre à la une de l'actualité de ce vendredi 31 décembre 2021. Comme il est de tradition, le chef de l'État va s'adresser dans un, environ 30 minutes à la nation. Paul Biya fera le bilan de l'année qui s'achève et jettera les bases de la nouvelle année. Le 31 décembre 2020, crise sanitaire, sécuritaire, situation sociopolitique et économique était au menu de l'adresse du président de la République. La Coupe d'Afrique des Nations, que va abriter le Cameroun dans neuf jours, pourrait s'ajouter à ce menu. En attendant le discours du chef de l'État, donc, nous écouterons dans ce journal les attentes des populations quant à cette adresse. Mesdames et Messieurs, une fois de plus, euh, bonsoir et bienvenue à cette édition bilingue. Et nous démarrons en langue anglaise avec vous, Catherine Conné. Good evening. Bonsoir, Oriane. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us on another edition of the It's PM Balingo Newscast on Spectrum Television. Cameroon has experienced a 12.5% increase in its economy this uh, 2021 as compared to 9% of uh, 2020 over 2019. Josephine Binzi in the following uh, report takes us through Cameroon's economic landscape in 2021. Her report. In 2021, experienced several lapses due to the fallout and devastating effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the first quarter of the year, the President of the Republic highlighted the economic sovereignty of the state for the finance law for a global sum of 350 and 750 billion CFA francs, respectively, to adjust the economy and financial markets. One of the very first economic openings this 2021 was a tarring of the roads leading to the Port Authority to facilitate entry for inhabitants living in the Dwalafo municipality, Bonaberry. The north entry of the Port Authority was tarred on the 13th of January by the Dwala City Council. Still in the first quarter of this year, a new twist came up between APM Terminal and Bolloré SA. The court sought for the suspension of the administrative body of the Port Authority, taking into consideration the creation and management, exploitation and maintenance of the Douala Port Authority. Still on the port in March, the Director General instituted a department in charge of overseeing the financial management within the context of verifying the installments of equipment in public service. Impact Economy organized an economic forum in its very first edition. Different enterprise owners had the opportunity to have an in-depth discussion on how to shape the economic future of Cameroon's economic capital. The country still moved lackadaisically into 2021 as the scars imprinted by the outbreak of the coronavirus in 2020 was still very much present. The International Monetary Fund IMF signed a 3 billion CFA France loan to Cameroon to be paid over a period of three years. This was one of the approach to help the country's economy to pick up from the devastating effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The new popular movement party headed by Banda Kani, however, organized a forum to lambast all forms of loans and credits taken from international organizations, as he called it a gift coded with poisonous substances. 2021 has been a year where the price hike in basic commodities was second to none. From tomatoes to eggs, corn to beans, and even fruits like oranges were suddenly at their worst prices between June to September. Some of the blame was apportioned to the Anglophone crisis, which has limited the access to farm-to-market roads. For the last quarter of the year, the major cities host to the upcoming African Cup of Nations like Yaoundé and Douala saw a new shift as several demolition activities which were carried out with new hotels marking their presence in the cities. Recently, Cameroon will soon experience a third real estate project championed by the Bank of Central African States, BEAC, with the construction of a headquarters in Cameroon. The Development Bank of Central African States for Central Africa appealed for the second time to sub-regional financial markets 
that an exceptional resolve of 117 billion will launch a second project of an identical amount. The Central African State Summit, which gathered presidents of the CEMAC zone, saw 27 resolutions with macroeconomies of states discuss with the problems brought forth by the global health crisis. Finally, the Director General of the Douala Pol Authorities, Sirius Ngo, signed a preferential tariff granting 250 francs per ton for goods in transit from Chad and the Central African Republic. Cameroon, according to Eco Martin Journal of 10th December, has made a 12.5% economic progress in 2021 as compared to 2020, which was plagued by the global health pandemic. And now the Board of Directors of uh, the National Observatory on Climate Change met, met in a nation's capital, Yaoundé, for their 12th ordinary uh, session. Let's take a listing to uh, that uh, ordinary session in the following interview. Right. I'd like to remain the baby structure. Uh, what that means would not request a lot of support, uh, technically, financially, technically perform to its best, uh, uh, which is still not in full, fully in place. Uh, our hope is that uh, our statutory structures, uh, the Ministry of uh, Environment Protection of Nature, Sustainable Development and Ministry of Finance, to give us, and as well as the Ministry of Impact, to give us uh, uh, the push needed for us to be able to achieve our objectives. Uh, we need infrastructure, we need logistics, we need uh, laboratory equipment to perform our technical loss, take out our various operations here and there. Remember that uh, a lot of field work is required, and you can do that on foot. Uh, so we're looking uh, towards a hope, a change, uh, come 2022. Uh, so far, uh, growing is difficult, but I think uh, we're beginning to see quite some hopeful signals coming on board. Uh, required those signals that we need to help on our grow. Nous poursuivons le journal avec vous, si vous le permettez. Euh, on va parler donc des attentes des populations quant au discours du chef de l'État. On le sait comme il est de tradition. Paul Biya, le président de la République, va s'adresser à la nation dans quelques minutes. Il sera 20 heures exactement. Mais avant ce traditionnel discours, nous avons tendu le micro aux Doualais pour avoir leurs avis sur les attentes ou alors sur ce qu'ils aimeraient entendre le président de la République dire ce soir. Je vous propose de les écouter. Vous voyez que l'année 2021 a été une année vraiment très difficile au niveau économique. Vraiment, il faudrait que lui-même qu'il tienne compte de ça. Surtout les jeunes qui sont au chômage. C'est très grave. Et on sait que le corona aussi, ça a vraiment impacté sur l'activité économique. Le mot que nous attendons, c'est que le président de la République puisse donner un mot d'apaisement, un mot qui peut, n'est-ce pas, réunir davantage les Camerounais, un mot qui peut faire de sorte que les Camerounais se regardent dans les yeux comme avant, pour que la paix règne, et puis, et en plus que cet événement, cet événement euh, presque, on peut dire, international à Cannes, que ça se passe aussi dans de très bonnes conditions. Nous n'attendons vraiment rien de lui, parce que ça fait longtemps et à chaque, chaque année, on nous promet, mais on ne voit rien de concret. On a de beaux discours, mais on ne pratique rien. Donc, vous-même, vous voyez comment la vie est devenue chère. On n'arrive plus à manger. On n'arrive ne serait-ce qu'à manger. Combien de fois pour le travail Donc, nous sommes vraiment dépassés. Nous avons des problèmes de, en ce moment, la sécurité nationale. Euh, nous avons également des problèmes d'Omanio. 
Et puis les encouragements à la jeunesse, parce que la jeunesse attend énormément de, de ce discours-là. Qu'est-ce qu euh, qu qui va se passer en 2022 Qu'est-ce que le gouvernement a prévu pour nous, notamment le budget de l'État oui, au niveau de l'éducation, au niveau de, de la santé publique et même des investissements pour la création des nouveaux emplois. Je ne sais pas exactement ce que notre président peut nous dire. Et il va toujours continuer le même discours qu'il a pour habitude de dire. Moi, je ne pense pas qu'il qu va faire de la magie. Il faut que le chef de l'État, le Nomgi, le père de tous les Camerounais, doit faire que tous les prisonniers qu'on les a arrêtés, qu'ils marchaient pacifiquement, même ceux qu'on a arrêtés chez eux, que ce soit pour la crise anglophone, que ce soit, que ce soit les militants du MRC, le nom guinois se met à genoux devant lui. Quand il va prononcer le discours à tous les Camerounais, qui fait que tous ces gens-là sortent, là nous on va bien fêter, et non seulement on va bien fêter la nouvelle langue, même le, la Coupe d'Afrique qui vient, on va bien fêter avec, parce que tous les Camerounais seront dehors, et nous tous serons derrière l'équipe nationale. And now, as we all gear towards the beginning of a new year, many people here in the city of Douala are making resolutions for the upcoming year 2022. Our reporter, Christel Asexuele, caught up with some uh, Douala city dwellers and uh, put together their following re reactions in the following report. As we cross over into the new year 2022, aspirations and resolutions are on high pitch as many look forward with great expectations and hopes for the upcoming year. For Clarice and others, peace in the two English-speaking regions of the country is their greatest and biggest wish and hope for the new year. Well, my decision for 2022 is to be a better person. And you know, there is a thing I can say to, to the world, I'll keep it to myself. But about what has been happening, what, what have we got on to, what, what have we got on for more than four years now in I, I'm the first section, I pray that we should look for a solution to solve these things, for us to have a tough peace. My own project that I've taken that we can make this year is that the problem of crisis that we have in our country. I pray God that we should almost go off because we are feeling difficulties in everything. Although we have our also our national cup that is coming, but we don't know what is happening. But we pray that God should help us that everything to pass okay. Le euh, le nord ouais le sud ouais se retrouve la paix et que le Cameroun euh, retrouve aussi son économie. C'est tout ce que c'est le souhait de tout le monde. Tant que euh, une partie du pays n'est pas tranquille, ça affecte euh, d'autres régions. Meanwhile, for Sally, focus and diligence in executing her daily task at her job is what she gears towards upgrading and putting into practice come 2022. I'll begin by thanking God for seeing me almost throughout 2021. As we know, we are just left with few hours to end 2021 and enter 2022. Concerning my New Year resolutions, career-wise, I would like to be more focused, more diligent, and time-conscious especially. I have to really be time conscious with events. However, as the chapter of 2021 gradually fades out with various resolutions and aspirations for the upcoming year, we all look forward to the end of 2022 for a balance sheet. And now in sport 2021, we witnessed some major changes in the sporting domain in Cameroon from Samuel Etofis being elected as president to the Indomitable Lions, qualifying for the World Cup playoff, not leaving the preparation for the uh, African Nation Cup. Oni Ladonet gives us a rundown on the sporting in uh, this year 2021. Yeah. 2021 has been a year of diverse fortunes for Cameroon in the sporting domain.
as various sporting federations in the country had something to write home about, be it in the local or international scene. In the footballing domain, Samuel Eto was voted president of the Cameroon Football Federation, Fekafoot, over Sedum Bumbunjoya. The ex-captain of the Indomitable Lions, aced with 43 votes over 74 in one of the most highly anticipated elections. A victory awaited by many as most Cameroonians openly express support to a tour board on and offline. Like any typical elections, this wasn't spared from pre-electoral disputes as Samuel Eto filed the complaints to the president of the Ethics Commission demanding the disqualification of Seidu Bumbunchoya and Alim Konate from all football-related activities on the basis of corruption. This appeal was ruled out and deemed inadmissible. It is worthy of note that this four times African Footballer of the Year had initially been disqualified from the electoral race for having a dual citizenship. But the ruling that nobody with dual nationality could run for office was later challenged and tossed out. Still in football, Cameroon showed great courage by hosting the African Nations Championship in the face of a global health crisis. From January 16 to February 7, Douala, Limbe and Yaoundé danced to the tune of soccer, with 16 teams competing for the grand prize, finally won by Morocco, with the Intermediate Lions finishing fourth in the tournament. The brilliant performances put up by some of the players opened doors for them to participate in the World Cup qualifiers. Names like Aqua Somo, Hashu Kirido, Salomon Banga Bijeme were called up by head coach Concessa Ho to defend the national colors in some World Cup qualifying games. Cameroon, who faced Rwanda, Mozambique, and Ivory Coast, finished first in Group D with 15 points, making it to the World Cup playoffs come 2022. The Under-20 African Nations Cup was also an exciting tournament that took place in 2021. Played in Mauritania, Cameroon defeated all group opponents making it to the knockoff stage, where the Afcon trains were shattered by title holders Ghana. Their early departure didn't stop Cameroonians from retaining names like Etienne Eto, Kevin Miller, Jean Junior, and Abdoulaye Yahaya. The under-17 African Cup of Nations on her part was cancelled five days to kick off. Planned to take place in Morocco, the African footballing body took such drastic decision as a result of the resurgence of the pandemic in the host nation, Morocco. The Cameroonian team who were already in camp had to halt every activity. Talking about the African Nations Cup in 2021, Cameroon intensified preparations for the 33rd edition to be played in 2022. The Olembe Stadium, set to host the opening and closing ceremonies, was completed in December. The draws took place in Yaoundé, with Cameroon lost in Group A. This tournament, hosted by the nation for her second time, will welcome debutant Gambian Comoros. A controversy broke out with international teams refusing to release their players on the basis of the pandemic and the discovery of the Omicron variant. This instilled fear in the hearts of many who all expected the cancellation of the African nation's scope. However, the statement made by CAF's president Patrice Mosepe on his visit to Cameroon silences every doubt and speculation that the 33rd edition of the African Nations Cup will be cancelled. In other domains, the female volleyball lionesses defeated opponents Kenya to retain the trophy. In handball, the Cameroon's women national handball team succumbed to the pressure mounted by Angola in the finals of the tournament, giving them their third trophy in a row and 14 overall title. On reaching the finals, Cameroon and Angola have all qualified for the World Cup Handball Championship. 
Another downside of sport this year was the shameful exit of Cameroonians at the Tokyo Olympics in all sporting domains. All athletes were shown the exit door at the early stage of the competition. The green, red and yellow flag was highly represented in Scrabble, with three Cameroonians winning the 2021 World Scrabble competition in France. With history being made as they become the first Cameroonians to achieve this feat. And that's it for the 8 p.m. Balinga newscast on Spectrum Television. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching uh, the news and wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our program and a happy new year 2022. Happy new year once more. Au revoir, donc. Bonne année, Catherine Pone. Mesdames et messieurs, merci à vous d'avoir été des nôtres. C'était la dernière édition de l'année 2021. Rendez-vous demain, 1er janvier 2022. Bonne année déjà par avance.